I want to thank you for joining us today for Tuesday Bible Study. Let's begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for blessing us with your presence. Guide us as we take a look at this very challenging lesson tonight, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> well, you notice I'm wearing a little bit of Doctor Who tonight. That's, that's kind of intentional because we're going to go down a rabbit hole. Actually, it's very intentional. I had the shirt out and I said, oh, I'm definitely wearing this. We're going down a rabbit hole with Paul today, and he's going to take us on a journey, and you're going to wonder where in the world he's going half the time. It's kind of like Doctor Who. All right, what it does is I, I'm encouraging you to please go to our Facebook page, either our Holy Trinity page or our, our Revolution Church page, and download the J, two JPEGs attached uh, on that underneath the uh, announcement for today's lesson because it is such a confusing lesson you will be lost and you'll be like what is going on here if you don't have this this is going to help you it's kind of the scorecard keeps you in track and lets you know where we're going tonight you know Paul really often meanders um, meander I, we had a woman in church Mary who, who lived to like 106 and uh, and oldest woman in the congregation and she used to tell these long, I, you know, I'd go to visit with her. She told these long stories, and she'd start with one thing. Well, you know, Pete, my cousin, and next thing you know, she'd be memory, going through the memory of being a child and through this and through that, and you're wondering, what does this have to do with Pete? Now, at the very end, she'd bring it back to Pete, and you'd say, okay. <laughs> How she got from the beginning to the end, she always finished the story. She always brought it back, but it took her about a half an hour to get there. <sighs> that's Paul. And that's our lesson for today. So I do want you to keep in mind many parts, one body, that this is the overarching theme of what Paul is trying to get us to think of. But man, he takes us down through so many rabbit holes in this lesson for today. So let me read to you. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 16. And we're going to stop. And like I said, I am really depending upon you having this handout to watch this lesson today. If you don't, you will be thoroughly lost. I am serious. Turn off the Bible study. Go download this. Come back and continue the Bible study. If you don't, this Bible study might be a waste of your time tonight. All right. So I have these things highlighted, I should say titles, for each one of these sections, just so you kind of know what Paul is trying to do. So the very first title that I have, it's my title, Walk in Worthiness. You are worthy by God's grace. This is what Paul has been developing up till now. God has made you worthy. You are in relationship with God because what God has done, you are worthy, therefore act in a way that's befitting of a person who's a child of God. Okay? So you don't act this way to get to heaven. You act this way because you are in heaven. And so I want to make sure that this is clear. All right? So therefore, I, the prisoner of the Lord, little, see, Paul loves it. You love this about Paul. Paul does all these uh, adjectival and adverbial uh, uh, participles and and, and, uh, and all these phrases that you're like, what the heck? He's developing the I. I'm the prisoner of the Lord. So there you go. I urge you. So he, he wants to show them his worthiness, okay? That he has a reason to implore them. He's a prisoner, so therefore you should listen to him. He's given more than all the rest. He's got skin in the game, all right? So I, the prisoner of the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling which you have been called. I, you know, I find this really interesting. Usually Paul uses, uses um, 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 these, when he, he, he tells people what to do, okay, he'll use a part of speech where he tells you the imperative. That's what I'm thinking of, an imperative. Do this, do this. In this case, he's not telling them to do this. He's urging them to do this. So he's not using the imperatives in this case. So I'm urging you. To think about this. Consider it. This might be a good idea. So I urge you, walk in a manner that's worthy of the calling which you have been called. Um, so you notice I've underlined worthy. And now he's going to flesh out what it means to be worthy, to walk in worthiness. So if you want to be worthy, if you want to walk in a manner that's worthy of the calling that God has placed on your hearts, do it with humility and with gentleness. 
and with patience, bearing with one another in love. Boy, well, you know, I'd love to just stop here and flesh this out a little bit more. Because I'm telling you, we all need this in our lives right now. We are so intolerant. I, I just get so tired of seeing how Christians or members of our church abuse people who disagree with them politically or for other reasons. And, and it's just so exhausting when you go on Facebook and you see Christians and the type of names and the type of horrendous behavior we have towards other people, how dismissive we are. I really am asking you to evaluate your posts and how you treat people and how you talk about people. Because notice again what Paul says. He doesn't say, <clears throat> be worthy by speaking with sarcasm and cutting people down and ripping them to pieces and telling them that they're stupid. He doesn't say that, does he? I don't see that anywhere in Scripture. He says, be worthy by living with humility, recognizing you might be wrong, people. You don't have all the answers. Be gentle. Even when somebody disagrees with you, be gentle. It's okay. We're at peace. Actually, I actually had somebody do this to me the other day. I was really upset. He kind of went flying by me with a car. And he was going too fast, by the way. And I said, what the heck, man? Slow it down. He stopped the car. And I thought, oh, great. So he's going to come. He said, man, 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 I'm, I'm sorry, man. I thought I was being, I, I, was, I was not going too fast. Well, he was going too fast. But the point is he came out and he tried to be gentle and bring my level of anger down and bring us at peace. I admire that. Still disagree with him. He's going too fast. But he saw me. And he stopped, and he tried to be gentle with me. I admire that. All right, we disagreed, but he was gentle. With all humility, with gentle, with patience. People are going to make the same mistakes over and over and over again. Be patient with that. Bearing with one another in love. Not because you have to. Oh, I got to. No, because I care for this person. Being diligent, so here's another thing, how you're worthy, by being diligent to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. We are one. We are to be one. We disagree about our systematic theologies. Who cares? <clears throat> God's going to set us all straight. Because you know what? Baptists are wrong. Lutherans are wrong. Methodists are wrong. We need a little bit more humility. Roman Catholics are wrong. We're all wrong. Be hum have a little more humility. <clears throat> and just love the people even though we disagree. All right? Keep the bond of peace with one another. So, notice again I underlined unity of the Spirit. Now he develops unity of the Spirit. What does it mean to have unity of the Spirit? There's one body, he goes on to say. One Spirit. So there's one body, one spirit. So he's going to flush out that one body, one spirit concept a little bit. That's why it's indented. Just as you were called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Not many baptisms. One. One God and Father of all who is over and all and through all. One baptism. Let's see, as long as it's done by the Baptists or as long as it's done by us Lutherans. No. We're going to disagree about our systematic theology. Who cares? Be at peace. So what? You don't have to correct everybody as though you're always right. Be at peace. Be one. Because ultimately, our God the Father is the one that unites us through Jesus Christ. You know what anybody calls upon the name of Jesus Christ is my brother or my sister. So, one God, <clears throat> Father, is over all and through all and in all. So, again, now he's going to flush out this phrase, all in all. Remember, the purpose is that we are many parts but one body. So, now he's going to flush out these many parts. <clears throat> he said we might be unique individuals. We may have differences of opinion, but we still can be one because God has given us this uniqueness 
for a reason to be a blessing. So to each one of us, we're unique individuals, but we're still supposed to be one. Each one of us, unique individuals, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Now, this word grace, you know, we think of it as a very theological term, but my, 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 <clears throat> my daughter's name is Carissa. I'm going to actually put that out here. This is actually based on a Greek word, charis, which in English we'd probably transliterate that as, as this. Okay, charis, which means gift or grace. That's what grace is. Grace is a gift. It's free. It's something we don't earn. It's something we don't deserve. So, I mean, it, it's, I, I really think this should be translated gift. E to each one of us, Gift, a gift was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Well, of course, it's the same word. <laughs> it uses grace according to the <clears throat> measure of Christ's gift. So I think that's probably what the translation was trying to do. But this is where Paul gets into a real rabbit hole, okay? I'd like to just skip all the way down to verse 11. Paul doesn't do that. He throws this little rabbit hole in here that I have no idea why he did this. He was probably... Um, he was probably uh, uh, thinking off the top of his head and somebody else was writing this for him and all of a sudden he, he gets into this rabbit hole and he's just kind of committed at this point. Now he's got to go back and try to find a way back to bring it back to the unity in Christ, the gifts that we've been given. So each of us is given according to uh, grace, according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it, the Bible says, here's the rabbit hole, when he ascended, of course, in this case, I think Paul is talking about Jesus. This is not what the psalm is talking about. Well, we do believe that Jesus is God, okay? But it isn't a prophecy about Jesus. It's a psalm of David. Psalm 68 is the psalm that he's quoting from, and he misquotes it, by the way. He's probably doing it from memory, and he really messes it up because it's, he messes up some very important points to this. Uh, so yes, Paul can misquote the Bible, and he misuses it. So he says, when he ascended to heaven on, on high, he led captive the captives, and he gave gifts to people. That's not what the Bible says. It's not what, it's a misquote again from Psalm 68. What it is, it's a Psalm of David. He's going through a difficult time. He's got enemies all around him, and he feels like he's going to be overwhelmed, and God delivers him and takes the captives, again, destroys those who would be, uh, who would be attacking him, and takes the captives, and the captives finally submit to God, and it is the captives who say, we submit, and they give gifts to God. God doesn't give gifts to them. They give gifts to God. So, I mean, it's a misquote and it's a mismemory on Paul's sake uh, of this scripture. But he quoted it. It's written on the paper. Now what's he going to do? He's got to try to bring it back to this somehow. So, but he's got another rabbit hole here. While that thing about him ascending. Oh, now this expression, he ascended, what does it mean? Except that he also descended into the lower parts of the earth. Okay, first of all, Paul's not referring to hell. I know some people, in particular, our, our Roman Catholic brothers and sisters, will use this as evidence of Jesus descending to hell. There's actually another passage uh, from 1 Peter 4, 6 that kind of says that a little bit more um, clearly. But in this case, Paul is, I think, trying to make a theological point that this Jesus, when we talk about him ascending to heaven, also had to come to earth. So he's really arguing, I think, making a theological argument for uh, Jesus being God walking amongst us in the most remote places of the earth in order to proclaim the good news of God. Okay, so I think that's what this kind of little rabbit hole is all about. He wants to remind them of who Jesus is. So this expression, he ascended, what does it mean except that he also descended to the lower parts? He who descended is himself, he who ascended far above all the heavens, so that he might fill all things. Okay, whoo, we're out of the rabbit hole. He comes back to the uniqueness of the individual again. <laughs> oh, good grief. So he gave, so, let me read verse 7 again, and we're going to skip the rabbit hole, 
and go straight to verse 7. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. He gave some as apostles, some as prophets, some as evangelists, some as pastors and teachers. Wouldn't it have been so much better without this little diversion? I mean, there's some interesting stuff in that diversion, but honestly, Paul, good grief. Okay, so some he gave as apostles, some as prophets, some as evangelists, some as pastors and teachers. Because remember, we are unique individuals, but we are called to be one. Their uniqueness is meant to help bring together us all as one. Oh, now we're back into another rabbit hole. Oh, Paul, why do you do this to us? Actually... It's not a horrible rabbit hole, because again, his thought, Paul's thought process at this point is, these individuals and all these unique gifts that we have, uh, all these, uh, all the uniqueness that each one of us have in, in, in inside of each one of us, these gifts that we have are meant to bring us together as one, and now he's actually going to tell us how these unique gifts bring us together. So maybe it's not as much of a rabbit hole as verses 8 through 10. So he says... These gifts, but in particular, he's developing the pastors and teachers. So some as pastors and teachers for the equipping. I guess it's actually all of them. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. They all have the purpose of doing what? Equipping the saints, verse 12, for the work of the ministry, for the building up the body of Christ. So in one sense, I have this label of, and another rabbit hole. It's not really a rabbit hole as much as the other one. He really is trying to develop this theme of these unique individuals. So they're unique individuals, but are called to bring us together by the work that they do. So you may be unique, you might have different opinions, you might be going in different directions, but that's because God has gifted you with those unique gifts. And you're going in a different direction because that's the direction God wants you to. But ultimately we're all supporting the one body. This is what Paul is trying to say. So all of these gifts are given for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ. So he brings us back, many parts, one body. Until, <laughs> okay, now as he spins out a little bit. So how long are they going to equip us for? Well, until we all attain, verse 13, the unity of faith, the knowledge of the Son of God to become a mature man, to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. When's that going to happen? When you're dead! Then we'll all achieve that. So you will not achieve the full knowledge of what God wants you to know until you're dead. You won't achieve the full stature that God intends for you until you're dead. And we're brought into the kingdom of heaven, and we are no longer walking by faith, but by sight. See, that was my own nice little rabbit hole. All right. So, he's, some, he's equipped for pastors and teachers and blah, 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 for the equipping of the saints as a result of being equipped this way. So, verse 14, this is another idea under the equipping. We are no longer to be children. Oh, okay, so he kind of is bringing it back to the very first verse. You're a prisoner, therefore walk in a manner worthy of your calling. As a result, don't be children any longer. Walk in a manner that's worthy. Don't be tossed here and there by waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine and trickery of people by craftiness and defeat, see, de deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in all aspects into him who is the head, that is Christ. So he has done something very clever. All of these little rabbit holes he went through, he's now tying it back to his very first concept to live in a manner that is worthy of Christ. So be, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in all aspects of him who's ahead, that is Christ, and now he's going to do a little development of Christ from whom the whole body is fitted together and held together by what every joint supplies according to the proper working of each individual causes the growth of the body for the building up of itself in love. So I find it a fantastic lesson. Lots of moving parts. But ultimately, Paul ends up in the very place in which he started. Walk in a manner worthy 
of the calling that God has placed upon your hearts. You are worthy, therefore be worthy. Now I know we're all individuals and we're all worn against each other like this, but you're given your unique gifts so that we might build the body up. For we are many parts, but we are one body. Let's pray. We do thank you, God, for the blessings of this lesson. And we thank you for Paul. <laughs> Paul was unique, and he was truly a gift to the church, and we thank you that you spoke through him. And we're grateful for the lesson that we've heard today. And God, we have been divided for too long, and the church has been the cause of much of this division. So let us be the ending of it through Jesus Christ. Bring all of these disparate parts together as one. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you in favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord.